रहती मैम सुन रहे थी मैम हेलो हाँ जी मैम मैं आपको वो ट्रांसफर कर रहा हूँ उसके जो राइट है ना ठीक है और आपने शायद इसका रिकॉर्डिंग भी ऑन कर दिया है मैंने रिकॉर्डिंग मैंने प्री रिकॉर्ड ऑन कर दिया ठीक है ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच हेलो हाँ मैम ट्रांसफर हो गया है आपके पास राइट चला गया ओके अभी शायद दिख नहीं रहा है मगर इसमें स्क्रीन पे नहीं मैम मेरे को मेरे को दिख रहा है आपके नाम के आगे होस्ट लिखा हुआ है ठीक है जी ओके थैंक यू मिथुन थैंक यू हाँ तनिमा तो मैं अभी इसमें बनी हुई हूँ पहले जरा स्टूडेंट्स को को बुला लू एक बार रिमाइंडर डाल देती हूँ Tanima, I'll be here only, but uh, not too much involved. Okay. You can okay. start at your own. Place. Right, right, right. I'll, I'll I do that. I have invited all the learners again. Right. So you can start uh, at. By twelve thirty-five, I'll start. Is it okay? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Uh huh. By twelve thirty-five, I'll start. So, best of luck for today's last. Uh, this third now. So yes, Monday is not possible. Monday mm -hmm. is not possible like six thirty. Is it possible for the last one of this uh, MMPC zero five? You let let's let us make it uh, Tuesday. If not, uh, okay. okay it would be good. Monday. Okay, no, no, no. No, don't let do us... it on uh, Monday because I need to act better. So, or uh, Tuesday or Wednesday, one day we can go do and finish this MMPC zero zero five. Then we'll left with MMPC zero zero three. हाँ uh, Tuesday Tuesday let us finish it off हाँ uh, Tuesday और Wednesday Tuesday Tuesday let us finish it off and then I'll be also free and हाँ uh, that free. is uh, no no you are not free then you have to take M M P zero 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 three yeah yeah I'll okay. be free from this one I'll be free from this one <laughs> so well that is why actually otherwise tempo जो है ना वो टूट जाता है थोड़ा बीच में हाँ 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 ज़्यादा लंबा गैप नहीं होना चाहिए नहीं यदि कल करना है तो आप कल भी कर लो कोई दिक्कत नहीं है अरे मैं नहीं कर पाऊंगी ना मेरे सारे ऑफिस के लोग तो सब घर में पड़े होंगे अच्छा 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 ना तो उनसे आ, उसके पीछे थोड़ी सी टेक्निकल और थोड़ी सी परमिशन लेनी होती है ठीक है कोई भी गूगल मीट नहीं कर पा रही हूँ ना मैं गूगल मीट तो मैं खुद ही ऑर्गेनाइज कर लेती हूँ जी 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 ट्यूजडे कर ली ट्यूजडे कर ली ट्यूजडे मोस्ट प्रॉब्ली ट्यूजडे और ट्यूजडे नहीं हो पाया तो वेडनेसडे कर लो Tuesday कोशिश कर लो क्योंकि फिर वह मैं फ्री हो जाऊंगी हाँ, वरना मेरे हाँ, लिए दिक्कत है आई नो आई नो ठीक है चलो चलो ओके 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 बेस्ट विशेष मैं यही हूँ अगर कोई दिक्कत हो आप कॉल कीजिएगा बाकी हाँ, मीटिंग में यही हूँ जी जी
good morning everyone rather good afternoon uh we are only 14 participants right now mm, and after uh, of course uh, yeah good afternoon Kuti, good afternoon rohit hello and uh, let's wait for five more minutes and then we'll start um, off, right hello. yes rohit uh and if, if in the meanwhile if you people have any doubts regarding the last session uh, you can ask me that uh, like we can discuss something which we have already done uh, we can do that uh, or uh, we'll wait for five minutes and uh, then we'll start whatever whatever is uh, good with you people you you people have any doubts regarding anything or any any anything else you want to discuss which you think is relevant to your uh, topic here the discussions that we are doing you can go ahead with it Today we'll do we'll do one uh, exercise to understand sampling so that you people have a hands-on understanding of it. I'm here. Uh, I'll I'm waiting three more minutes and then I'll start with the class. In the meanwhile, if you people have any doubts, uh, just open your mic and speak. All right, so it's 12.35 and we are starting. Uh, right, uh, that day, just to, uh, just to recall what we did, uh, we have uh, spoken about data. We have seen how the data gets collected. Uh, we 
uh, we see saw a bit of tabulation thing uh, uh, not the tabulation the presentation i uh, will come more to the presentation part later on when we'll be doing correlation regression uh, we have uh, 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 spoken about the measures of central tendency uh, standard deviation uh, like uh, of course dispersion we saw range mean deviation standard deviation i laid much more stress on the standard deviation and i told you people that why is it called standard deviation uh, then uh, we uh, moved to, to sampling, that is, uh, of course, the data collection on the ground. And I uh, told you people that sampling is something which uh, originated from India, like uh, PC Mahalanobis was the person who started uh, this entire process. And like right now, uh, if you cannot think of uh, statistics uh, without sampling, without drawing samples, you can't think of that. So this entire uh, sampling thing came from him. And of course, there are different types of uh, samples if I may just move my uh, screen here it is uh, okay so we were here and uh, that day I suppose Rohit answered or somebody had answered that uh, the prob probability sampling and non-probability sampling so we said that probability is something every uh, variable or every observation of the population uh, has an equal chance of getting selected into the sample, whereas in non-probability sampling, that doesn't take place. Uh, uh, now, uh, uh, we, I, I told you people that if you want, you can, uh, you, there are various methods of, of uh, finding the sample size. There are various formulas for doing that. And uh, of course, you can, as I said, you can go to Google and it depends whether your population that you have is uh, like, do you have a defined population or a undefined population? So uh, if it is a defined population where you know that what your population is, so that becomes a bit easy to draw samples, uh, right? this becomes a bit difficult because then you have to use a lot of indirect methods to find out the population size and many a times we then just go for non-probability non sampling because probability sampling that then doesn't become uh, then doesn't uh, then is not feasible it's not uh, like you you can't do that right now uh, there are various uh, types of samples uh, that are there now one is uh, the random sample and uh, uh, these are all probability sampling right this is all probability sample uh, random sample as we said uh, people when when we ask them that how do you draw a random sample uh, they say that uh, you just draw randomly so you know there, there is a uh, there is a method to the madness right there is a method to the madness uh, you cannot just draw samples randomly like that that randomness has to have a method behind that and what is that method right uh, like uh, you you may go for a stratified random sampling you may go for a cluster random sampling many a time we go for cluster stratified random sampling that also a lot of people do uh, that, that means it's a mix and match of cluster sampling stratified sampling a random ra the word random basically here means that again because it's a probability sampling so each uh, observation or each uh, variable of your uh, population is getting a chance of getting selected as a as a sample now uh, there has to be a balance or like that as i said that there has to be a method to the madness that means that if I am, uh, say, supposingly, I want to choose, like, uh, let, let me take the example of IGNU. And how many students uh, are there enrolled in IGNU? A rough a, a, a guesstimate. How, how many students might be enrolled in IGNU? A guesstimate if we can have. Anybody? Anybody who is coming up with... Uh, Any number? Okay. Thousand? Ah, Dimpy. Mm. Let, let's talk in uh, thousands and lakhs rather. 
uh, IGNU, if, if all the courses of IGNU uh, are involved, say supposedly there are 50,000 students, right? Let's take for IGNU, we are saying that there are uh, 50,000 students. Uh, my sample size, like I go to Google and my sample size they give me is 396. Now, to be on the safer side, I increase my sample size to say 425. Now, how do I choose my 425 from 50,000? How do I choose? Anybody please open your mic and let me know. How do you choose this 425 from uh, 50,000? Ma'am, on the basis of uh, geographical location, okay. like few few people from Delhi, few people from other cities, and okay, the basis so you on say that. geographical location. All right. Anything else? Course good, which good, they are good. enrolled in. Uh, sorry, the courses Course. in which they are enrolled. enrolled okay, in. courses they are enrolled in. Very good. What else? Age and gender. Age and gender. Very good. <laughs> uh, what else? Okay, let me now. Or uh, they're fresh graduates, or I mean, whether they're uh, uh, already into uh, some job and then uh, doing MBA, or they're pursuing MBA for the first time. I mean, as soon as they finish their graduation. Okay, all right, fine. So, uh, right. So, Ignu, we say fifty thousand students. Very quickly, I'm writing it here. Three ninety six. My sample size. I made it to 425 so that I do not miss out on anything. Now you people told me uh, geographical locations. You said uh, courses enrolled. You said age. You said gender. You said experience. Okay. Now, what are these? What are these? These are absolutely right. But what will you call them? What, will you call them stratas? Will you call them clusters? Clusters. Mm -hmm. Is it clustering? Is it stratification? Strata means making groups, isn't it? Like we stratify things. You. Uh, remember your geography lessons where you, we said we have stratas there so or in, in physics also or uh, in geography we talked about the stratosphere and things so, uh, that, that, that was there. So uh, is it stratification, is it clustering or is it both? Uh, more like stratification. More like stratification. Hmm. Uh, Okay, it, it is, it's a combination of both. Now, what happens, like, if I just go and tell, show you the cluster. Now, here we are saying that you are, population is divided into subgroups or clusters like families. So, you talked about geographical thing. So, if you are talking about geographical, then that becomes cluster, right? And then comes your uh, stratification. Stratas are what? Uh, when you are dividing it into uh, stratas, like in our case, we divided them on the basis of age, on the basis of gender, on the basis of their experience. So then if you are doing that, then that becomes stratification. So uh, it, it's a mixed sampling that you are, you are doing. So uh, this, is, uh, this is your clustering. And these are your stratas that you have okay so let us let us say that uh, let's divide let's divide these 50000 students into first of all let's take 50000 and let us talk about the courses right so we say bba ba bcom mba BSc, MSc, MA, 
let's let's just uh, right now we, let us make these many now uh, within this i can go with age okay within this i am now going uh, the reason i'm using so many colored pens is so that you can understand so you have your male female male female male female male female Now, how many stratas did we make? How many stratas have we made? There are two substratas, that is male and female. How many stratas do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven stratas, right? Let us make one more so that it becomes easy for us uh, to calculate. Uh, MCOM, MSC, BSC, MA, BA. Let's MCA. MCA, chalo, MCA. Okay, let's take MCA and again we are having uh, male and female over here. So we are having basically, let me write it down now. We are having eight stratas. We are having two substratas. My sample that I need to collect is of 425. Now my question. Please understand my question. I'm writing my question over here. My question is there on your screens. Ma'am, it should be representative of the numbers. We yes. cannot take equal sample from each. Okay, so you say you say emphatic no to this, Arvinda. You say a no to this, right? Yes. So let me write no over here. All right. Now you said that equal representation, absolutely right. How do you give that equal representation, Arvinda? From the numbers, we have to derive a ratio, ma'am. From ah. the numbers based ah. on these uh, strata and substrata, we have to derive the ratio and then mm -hmm. uh, calculate uh, the number of uh, people to be included in each subgroup. Wow. Arvinda, what do you do? I'm a uh, postgraduate dental surgeon and I have worked as faculty in a dental college. Okay, that's the reason you know all these answers. <laughs> good, <laughs> good, good. Very good, very good. I'm so impressed. Uh, it's so nice to teach uh, students like you. Uh, right. So what she is talking, uh, we use the word weight over here. So we say that you give weights to your strata and then you take it because I, you cannot give equal because uh, the reason I'm saying that why you need to give weights is say you have BA, BBA, BCOM, and uh, BSc from your graduates and then you have got your MA, MBA, uh, MCA and MSc. These are the from your uh, uh, postgraduates. Now BA might have 12,000 enrollments, BBA might have 3,000 enrollments, BCom can have 5,000 enrollments, BSc may have 1,500 enrollments. MA may have 8,000, MBA 6,000, MCA 3,500, MSC what's left, uh, 12, uh, 20, 28, 34, uh, 34, 37, 38, uh, we are left with 12,000. So we are taking say 6,000 from here and uh, others are the remaining uh, we are leaving out right so you cannot have okay now let's not take six thousand here let's let's change that uh or let let us let it be six thousand five no issues so 
these are the weights so you because ba has got the highest number of enrollment it has to have the highest number of samples as well right uh, bsc has got the least number of enrollments and therefore it has to have the least number of samples as well now you cannot again straight away uh, with this ratio that means like the total comes out to be uh, how much was it coming out to be? Ah, let's again, we have to do it. 20, 21, 500, uh, 22, 25, uh, 25 plus uh, 12 is 37, 37 plus 8 is 45. So that's coming out to be, is it right? Like, is my calculation fine? 45,000 is what we are, uh, I'm getting. Uh, so uh, it is not, uh, you do not say that BA is, uh, 12,000 by 45,000, you take that ratio and then you uh, take a ratio from 425. No. Now, within this 12,000, you have to see that how many males and uh, how many, okay, it's coming out to be 58,500. Arvinda, oi, oi. Achha, I've surpassed. Uh, 12, 20. No, no, it's okay, ma'am. 44,500. Okay. 45 only are I? Ah, because 12 plus 8, 20, 29, uh, 29 plus uh, 5 is 34. I have taken 1500 and 15,000. Sorry. Okay. Ah, okay. Wait, wait, wait. So you have to uh, calculate how many males and how many females. And then, because out of these 12,000, if you're having 9,000 males and uh, 3,000 females, then of course, uh, uh, males will be more in your sample. Males should be more in your samples than females. In MBA, it might be that uh, three thousand each, three thousand male, three thousand females. In MCA, you might have four thousand females and two thousand males. So you have to give them proportion. So that is how you divide your sample size, like your sample that is four twenty five, the sample that you have. You then divide it into it by weights and then you draw the sample. Achha. Now, this uh, tells, so far is it clear? Is it clear to everybody? Is this much clear what we were doing? All these calculations and everything, is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay, great. Thank you. Now, say supposingly, supposingly, I'm not calculating it right now. Okay, so I'm, I'm again supposing, I'm supposing it that from BA, I need to take a sample of 137 students. Okay. I have to take 80 male and 57 females. This is my, this is what my calculation has told me. Now, how to take these 80 and how to take these 57 uh, females? I go to the class. There are 12,000 students. I like on my computer, I have got the list of those 12,000 students. Now, how do I pick my 80 males and 57 females? I uh, In Excel, I went, I put the filter, I filtered out males, I filtered out females. Now, how to pick those 80 males and how to pick those 57 females? You can choose any nth number and uh, take the nth uh, sample or uh, we can take uh, table use table of random numbers. Is that correct, ma'am? Okay. All right. Okay. Very good. Again, she has taught this, so she knows this. <laughs> good. Good. You know, uh, there are various ways of doing it. One is tippet table. Now, generally, people don't use this tippet table. One is this. Second, because we are all using MS Excel nowadays, you go to MS Excel, you use the function random and you uh, give it give the commands with the specifications that if it is male then you choose and you give them the limits and you do that third is the one that she was talking about that you go to the every nth number that is known as the skip um what is it called uh, uh, it's it's uh, it's known as the uh, the skip method the skip method now uh, 
generally what happens is this is something which is very easy to do for the students of course this is also very easy people who are familiar with excel they can easily do it so uh, this is skip interval method oh, yeah, I, I thought i was doing something wrong here uh, this is known as uh, skip interval method so what we do is in the skip interval method you have got 12000 out of that you have got uh, how many males were there? 9,000 were males. So out of those 9,000, I have to pick uh, 80. So I divide 9,000 by 80. And whatever, how much does it come? Uh, 9,000 by 80 will be coming out to be what? Um, 8, 9, 8, 10, 80. So it will be 1. And then 10 will be uh, 1. And how much is it coming out to be? 9,000 divided by uh, 80. Yeah, you people are asking me to use my calculator. Huh? 100.5. 100 uh -huh, uh -huh. 112.5. Okay. So I say that I'll go with every 113th boy. I go with every 113th boy or, or I go with every 112th boy till the time I do not reach my 80. So this is one method. So these are the three methods that you have of choosing that that uh, uh, that uh, uh, male or female from the thing. Because uh, this is a very common question that uh, is asked. Like you people who are there in the companies, if you have, uh, like you send your, uh, uh, you send some of your uh, sales pe salespeople, uh, to a mall or to a shopping uh, complex and ask them that, you know, you need to uh, uh, interview your customers and see whether they are satisfied or not. Or you ask them to stand at the door of your shop, uh, of your store, and you ask them to uh, speak to the customers. Now, how do they do that? Like if they pick up the uh, first 50 coming out or the last 50 coming out, there can be a bias. So there that skip interval method works that you know that, okay, in my, like in a day, uh, we get, uh, we do 300 billings. So uh, out of those 300 billings, if we want to take 30, uh, 30 people, so every 10th person who is coming out, uh, the, the bill person uh, gives, a, uh, gives a signal, ki ye wala, and you go and speak to that. So this is how this is, uh, this is done. Actually, it is done on, on the ground when you are collecting the data. And we have used the mixed method. We have used cluster. We have used uh your stratified rand uh, things and these are all random sampling that we have done is it clear is this thing clear to everybody yes ma'am yes ma'am okay or or uh okay okay uh fine cool uh the other method that we do uh like uh, if we go uh, talk about non-probability sampling that day i was giving you the example non-probability sampling is either your pop uh, uh, you are doing it is, is that either the population is not defined like if your population is not defined then also you go for uh, non-probability sampling uh, many a times your objective is such that you cannot go for 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 uh, uh, probability sampling that day i was talking to you about uh, drug use uh, you you want to use uh, talk about drug use you want to talk about uh, say a special disease or uh, like a disease can never be special like it, it's it's if it's a rare disease i should not use the word special like if, if somebody is having a rare disease like one of our scholars she is doing uh, in this is of uh, lpu i'm talking lovely university i'm talking one of our scholars she is doing it on a disease which occurs only in males and the probability is one in 10,000 live births. Uh, and it's a disease only found in uh, males. Uh, she is uh, working with uh, PGR uh, Chandigarh. And from there, she's collecting the data. So there it is not possible for her to go for probability sampling. She has to go for convenience sampling. Her sample size is also very small. Her, uh, so her sample size is just 30. Uh, that is uh, what her sample size is. So uh, it depends on the objective that you're doing. It depends on what sort of things you're doing. So every time you cannot go, 
like if you if you do talk to people who are into statistics they'll constantly tell you that you should be going for a probability sampling but all the time probability sampling is not possible so uh, depending upon the objective depending upon the population being uh, defined or not you can you can choose whether you want to go for prob many a times you know you uh, do, uh, do the mixing of it as, as well uh, how do you do the mixing is that you went for uh the and like in the when you're making the sample design you went with uh, clustering you went with stratification uh, you uh, took the random then when you went to the last here there you go for convenience sampling because you, you went till the last year and then it is not possible to go either use the tippet table or the randomization or the skip interval method all these things are not possible so then you go for the convenience sampling whom to talk and whom not to talk right so uh, uh, this is this is about sampling like in in science when uh, uh, like I, I remember uh, like uh, while my sister was doing her masters and they used to go to collect her samples uh, from like from the water bodies they used to go and collect their samples so there uh, it, it was more of convenient sampling because they had to do the studies on a some particular type of uh, of organisms so uh, they had to take it from the uh, from that water body where it was available in abundance uh, of course uh, the water body that was selected was randomized but then uh, when they went in there there they took it from uh, then it became convenient sampling because obviously all the all the water bodies did not have it or even within the wa water body uh, you cannot uh, they couldn't collect the sample from each part because obviously uh, those uh, water hyacinths and everything were in, in some particular area so they took it from there so uh, yeah you can have a mix of that uh, too as well is it okay I, I, I suppose it's clear okay now one more thing regarding sampling and then we'll move to another uh, uh, another topic have you people ha heard about RCT randomized control trial man yep and lady let me know what is it ma'am we uh, when we are trying to do a drug trial or uh, uh, clinical trial on drugs mm -hmm. we uh, actually when we when we want to study the efficacy of a particular drug mm -hmm. we have to uh, take two i mean take a uh, experimental group and a control group Mm -hmm. Control group, either you give a placebo or a, a, a drug without any effect. Mm -hmm. And then for the experimental group, we try the drug. But this has to be randomized. So whenever the patient with a specific disease set walks in, mm -hmm. we allot uh, them randomly to both the groups and then mm -hmm. just and check the efficacy after a particular uh, interval. Okay, uh, the, whether the intervention is working or not. Yes. Right. And this can be blinded. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm. at both the at, at a single level or a double level or a mm. triple level right wow okay so i don't need to teach you this uh, she has taught you uh, i'll just add it because i'm a social scientist so let me add it she gave a wonderful ex absolutely correct example from where rct is generated you know uh, randomized controlled trials they started from science uh, uh and from medicine like specifically from medicine uh, they started and uh, where they used to have those control groups and uh, as as she very rightly pointed out i i won't repeat that uh in social sciences uh, we have uh, i said i don't know whether you people have heard the name of uh, abhijit banerji esther Def Duflo. i don't know whether uh, uh, both of them uh, husband and wife uh, nobel laureates uh, they they won it in they won the nobel in the year 2019 if i'm not mistaken uh they use they have made uh, the use of rct very popular in economics and they carried out uh, uh, um, uh, like um, the first experiment that they carried out in india was in uh, rajasthan that they did and uh, what uh, like uh, people were not coming out for these uh, polio vaccinations uh, we had, uh, of course, we had Mr. Bachchan uh, uh, talking about the importance of uh, of uh, polio drops. We we saw so many things, and the government went door to door and everything. But still, there were uh, we we became polio free, and again, uh, polio came back. So 
uh, of course, they did it way back when it was not polio free. Uh, I suppose 10, 12 years, 15 years back, they did this trial in India. And uh, what they did is that they took one village where they gave a, a kg of pulses along with uh, pulses, dal, uh, along with uh, the, like, to the parent of the child who came for the vaccination. Uh, and uh, of course, if you were not coming for vaccination, you were not getting it. So, uh, and like uh, rather uh, like one group where they came for the vaccination, they were being given the pulses and the other group where they came in for the vaccination, but they were not being given the pulses. So that is how they carried it out. Obviously, the results were much better in the area where the pulses were being given. One kg of pulse was given. So uh, then the government took this initiative that, okay, uh, just to promote this, uh, especially in the rural areas, especially in the areas where uh, you had uh, lower income people, uh, there this was used uh, in a big way and uh, it, it made RCT very popular in economics, though, of course, there are two schools of thought. Uh, one school of thought uh, supports RCT and the other school of thought says that in social sciences, we should not be using RCT. It should be only limited to the uh, to medical science. Of course, there are two schools of thought. You can have your own uh, take on that. Uh, right. Any any questions? Anything you people have not understood? Something that you want to me to go? Uh, anything? Anything you people want me to speak about? Uh, because we have uh, we have already had half an hour of class. Half an hour we have done. I know it's a Sunday. Uh, Madam, can you please uh, explain the RCT method? I uh, the RC, RCT, basically, Madhav, in RCT, what happens is that you have, we have two groups. One is a control group, and the other is a uncontrolled group, right? And then you are get, giving some sort of an, some intervention is taking place. And you want to find out, let me use her word, you want to find out the efficacy uh, of this intervention. You want to find out that whether this intervention works or doesn't work. So you, you give, like in case of what Esther Daflo and Abhijit Banerjee did was uh, that uh, they gave one kg of dal to people who came for polio vaccination, right? And uh, in, in one group, that was G1. In G2, nothing was given, even if you came for your polio vaccination. And this is randomized, uh, uh, as she said, that you, you randomize it uh, and uh, do it. And uh, then you see that whether this intervention is working or not, that is like whether this uh, uh, intervention of one kg of dal is working or not, that is it, uh, is it bringing more people to get their kids uh, vaccinated than in the area where there is no, no incentive that is being given. So this is basically what randomized control trial is. And uh, this is, as I said, that in social sciences, we use this a lot, but uh, Mm, okay, okay. Uh, right, okay. So this is uh, this is it. Madhav, uh, am I? Uh, did I make sense? Yes, ma'am. Okay. 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 Now I have got a uh, like a question or like or a request or anything you can call. Uh, Madhavi wants to tell me how to calculate standard deviation. Madhivi, you have got marks, right? So you have got marks of students 10, 15, 18, 12, 16, 14. Uh, 17. How much is the total coming out? Very quickly. How much is the total coming out? 50, 80, 110, 140, 
165. Let's let's make this also 10. And let's make this 160. Is it 160 that uh, you people are getting? It's 156. Eh, 56 to Aiga ini. One fifty six आएगा ही नहीं. Uh, okay, Rachna, I'll I'll tell you. Let me just explain this and then I'll come to your question. Just tell me the um, the total. Ah, you people make me. Yes, yes, one sixty. One sixty, right, right. So the mean mean will come out to be uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have got mean will be 160 by 10, which is 60. Now I find out B. B is what? X minus X bar. Uh, so mean is 16. So I've got minus 6, minus 6, 2, minus 4, 0, minus 2, 1, minus 3, 6, 12. Then I find out D squared. So that's 36. Please keep on adding up. 4, 16, 0, 4, 1, 9, 36, 144. How much is the total coming out? 72, 76, 86, 92, 96, uh, 106, 112. 114, 112, 142, 242, 246, 286, 286. 286. Up, okay, 286. Right. Now you calculate your standard deviation, which says summation d square upon n, the whole under root. So this comes out to be 286 by 10. The whole under root which is 28.6 under root so this will come out to be five point how much is it coming out to be five point how much 5 point. 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 5 5 point. 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 5 uh, which is the square of standard deviation and so this is this is your variance and this is your standard deviation uh madhavi is it all fine is it uh, Ma madhura sorry not madhavi sorry madhura is it okay all right okay most welcome now, uh, I, Rachna is asking that how to find out the sample size from the population. Is there a formula or a table? I've already told you this, that yes, there are, there are many formulas for doing it. And um, one is, um, Krochen ka ek formula hai. Uh, and sample frame and sample size. There is sample size and sample frame with a both difference. Okay, just let me do very one thing. I suppose my screen is visible now to everyone. Like because I want to go for uh, all right. One is you have the 
Coach um, Coachran's uh, one. Uh, this is what I was for forgetting his name. One is the Coachran formula. Coachran's uh, is there. Of course, you can go to any uh, like Coachran's uh, 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 formula is there. You can find it out. Uh, This is this is the formula, z square a pq upon e square, uh, which is the formula here, and uh, e is basically uh, the uh, precision. So we said that on that day also I said that it's ninety five percent that we keep this as that uh, you will be finding it out at ninety five uh, percent. Uh, p is the estimated proportion of the population uh, you are taking, and of course q is one minus p uh, that you are taking. Uh, you did not remember this formula. You just go and uh, you go to uh, Google and ask them. Uh, you write sample size calculator and. Here they, you go. It's already given ninety five percent, five percent. Excuse me, ma'am. The screen yes. is not visible. The screen is not visible. The screen is not visible. Okay, just, just only the just, presentation just. slide is there. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes, I I thought. Uh, okay, all right. Ah, where did it go? Yeah. Rachna, is it visible now? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I first I said that sample size uh, calculation formulas. So uh, you have just like you have uh, different methods for this, and uh, I told you about uh, the, like the most famous or so the most popular method is uh, the Cochran uh, method. And uh, uh, like when we did, we used this method. We did it uh, like uh, manually. At that time, we did not have those estimators, so we did it manually. Now, so you can do it uh, online. So uh, the, this this is the formula here, right? So this is the formula that you have for uh, calculating it. Z square PQ upon E square E is your uh, level of uh, uh, efficiency or the marginal uh, uh, that you are wanting it. As I said, it's uh, generally we keep that as a ninety five percent, and uh, yeah, so you calculate this. So it's instead of doing this, you can uh, straight away go to uh, sample size calculator and. You go to the survey monkey. There are so many uh, things. You just tell them that uh, 95 percent margin of error is five percent population proportion. Uh, it is this. This is the uh, what should I say? Uh, this is the uh, uh, by default it is set at fifty percent. You can always change that. Uh, this I taught you how to take that proportion, the weight that we are taking, that how much proportion you want to take. Say you are you have got ninety percent of males in your population and ten percent females. So then, uh, you have to uh, you you make this as ninety percent, and you tell them the uh, your population size is ninety nine thousand, and you ask them to calculate. So it gives you the sample size gives you one thirty seven, right? I did it by myself and I got the same number. Bingo. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, so this is how you calculate your uh, your sample size. Uh, fine. Now, uh, let me stop sharing and I'll come back to my uh, PPT because your second question that I need to answer. Uh, no. Your second part of the question was that what is the difference between uh, uh, sample size and sample frame? Sample size is uh, just the thing that I just told you. That is your sample size. Uh, okay, so let me go. Uh, all right. 
I suppose my PPT is visible. Yes, yes ma'am. Now it's visible. Okay, okay, all right. So my sample size is. Uh, sample size is what size of the sample basically. It's it's that uh, out of the population, uh, what sample you are going to take. So that is your sample size. So in our case, like for the example that we were talking about, we said our sample size is four twenty five. You asked about sample frame. Sample framework is the total that you say that you have got your population and then you uh, divide it into. So you divided it into classes. Then you said now in this also, if you want, you can do further classification here. So uh, you can say that, okay, you say BCOM, and then in BCOM you say, this is the region-wise stratification that we did. And then you go for, You go for male, female. So this is what you are talking about. This is your sampling framework. This, if if you make this right, if this is this goes, like, if this is correct, then uh, only your sampling will be correct. Otherwise, uh, like, because you are going for probability sampling, so you have to follow this entire step. To get the correct frame, like if your framework is correct, once you have reached this framework, that is when you then go and choose these 425. So, like in our case, if we are saying that we want to collect 137 samples from BCOM, so you have one, two, three, four, five, five regions. Within those five regions, you've got male, female. So that might come out, of course, then it depends that how many students. How many students from each zone or each region that that will make the weight of it, and then you further go and take it out from that. So this is entirely this is your framework. Ye kha, kha, ye dhacha hai aapka, ye structure hai. And then you collect your sample. Rachna, uh, did I make some sense? Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Bless you. Okay. Any any other questions? Anybody else who wants to ask any other question? Mm. Hmm. No questions. Okay. Good. I'm a bad teacher. Tell Um. Uh, Questionnaire uh, framing is, uh, of course, very, very important. And it is, uh, uh, of course, here also you've got a structured questionnaire. Uh, we use these two words a lot. We use the word structured questionnaire and we use the word non structured questionnaire. Now, uh, say uh, you are working for Amazon. Somebody's working for Amazon, right? And uh, in US, uh, they have prepared a questionnaire and uh, regarding uh, consumer satisfaction, they have made it there. And they ask the Indian office, uh, the people from USA, they ask the Indian office to. Uh, measure the consumer satisfaction. So they use the same questionnaire. They're using the same questionnaire. So this is basically structured questionnaire where you are using a pre-defined or a pre-made uh, questionnaire. If you're using that, uh, which has been pre-tested, everything has been done, all the testing and everything has been done. 
then that is known as a structured questionnaire if you are making a questionnaire from scratch that means you will be doing the content validity or the face validity you will then uh, look at the reliability of your things you will edit, sub edit, and then you will collect your data, then that is known as non-structured questionnaire. Okay, so uh, generally in management, uh, uh, what we have seen is that people generally use structured questionnaires that if somebody, uh, like, like in HR, uh, HR, uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, data collection takes place regarding employee satisfaction, employee turnover, like uh, employee feedback, uh, uh employee grievances uh employee relationships uh employee affairs all the, there are so many things and there are uh, there uh, like a lot of psychologists have uh, prepared those uh, questionnaires they have those questionnaires ready with them so you you use the pre-tested uh, uh questionnaires and if you're doing that then that is a structured questionnaire that you're using Fine. Is, is the difference between structured and uh, non-structured clear? Mm, yes, got. So Madhura, you're from Ali, New Alipur, Dwar, West Bengal. What do you do? Madhura? Madhura. Not Madhura, it's Madhura. Yeah, Madhura, what do you do? Yes, ma'am. Hello. What do you do, Madhura? Mm. Okay, I, I suppose you are MSc Biotech. Oh, wow, wow. Do you do you people collect data through questionnaires? I don't think so. You people go to the labs, and like you go to people and uh, you collect uh, things. Of course, in biotech also, you can do a lot of, uh, you people can do a lot of, uh, no, but you can do like, uh, say, supposingly, uh, you want to take a swab of, uh, of somebody. Uh, for, for that, you need to know the history of the person. And yes, uh, uh, no, of course, there are different methods in science. In science, uh, generally, we don't go for, for questionnaires there. Uh, it's more of the, the questionnaires are more there in social sciences uh, and in, in uh, humanities. And uh, Shruti, uh, what you missed out, you missed out on uh, structured and uh, non-structured questionnaire. Structured questionnaire is basically a questionnaire that is pre-tested, which has been prepared by somebody, which has been used by somebody. It has been pre-tested, all, everything is set, and you're using the same questionnaire for your own study. So then that becomes a structured questionnaire. On the other hand, if you're preparing a questionnaire from scratch, uh, you are preparing it, you are sending it to the experts, uh, getting the content validated, then uh, you go out in the field, do a pilot study, uh, do those uh, uh, like uh, the reliability tests and all those things, and then you uh, use it and go out and collect your data, then that is, that is a non-structured questionnaire that you have, right? So that that is basically the difference and of course uh, when you are preparing your questionnaires uh, uh, of course it depends on the objective please remember that your the objective is the king the objective of your study the objective of the study is the king or the queen whatever you want to say and uh, it, that is the queen so you have to the questions have to meet the uh, or they have to map match the objectives if your questions are not matching your objectives they, they might be excellent questions but then they won't uh, count they won't matter uh, what matters is that uh, your objectives needs to be covered so you have to uh, uh, keep that in mind you have to be very sensitive while you're preparing your questionnaires you cannot ask there are a lot of uh, sensitive questions that are there uh, so you have to be very very uh, intelligent and you have to be emotionally very intelligent to ask those questions so that nobody gets hurt when you are asking the question plus you get the information as well because you cannot just say that okay uh this is something which is a uh, taboo or this is something that uh, people are sensitive about so i won't be asking them of course you have to ask them uh, questions if, if there is a condom company who is uh, who are uh, carrying out a questionnaire 
uh, they have to ask about the sexual habits of the people. So they, they can't say that, okay, look, this, the, the topic is very taboo. We aren't going to do that. Uh, you have got uh, those uh, ministerial uh, um, uh, products uh, that are being sold. You have to be, you have to ask the uh, people whether they are comfortable with it, not comfortable. With it. Of course, you have to be very, very sensitive while you are asking those questions, right? So, yep, yeah, uh, do that, and uh, yeah, mm, right. So, know your respondents. I've seen a lot of people. Uh, their their questionnaires are excellent. Uh, like when you read the questionnaire and you are so impressed that, ah, what data they'll collect. The problem is that they don't know the respondent. Uh, if I don't know the class, which I'm teaching, if I don't know what sort of students I have, I might be the best teacher in the world. I might have excellent knowledge, but if I cannot uh, deliver my content according to the requirement of my students, I'm an idiot. Okay, I'm somebody who's just coming here and wasting the time of yours and mine. So I need to understand my audience well when I'm speaking to you. So same is the case when you're collecting the data. If you if you do not understand your audience, uh, you do not know your respondents. You are gone, right? So fine. So we'll 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 stop this here and we'll come to a new topic. Uh, in the meanwhile, you people can keep posting your comments. Anything you people want me to explain again, uh, revisit. Anything, 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 anything. Do people want me to do? Just put in your questions there. No, nothing. Okay, a two minute break because it's all already one hour uh, that I've been speaking. I'm just, uh, I'll just go and have a sip of water. Uh, Madhura, study your geometric mean and harmonic mean on your own. Uh, those are very easy topics, uh, nothing much. You should be only knowing that when to use geometric mean and when to use harmonic mean. In one, we use the reciprocal. In one, we use the log. Okay, so when to use which one, uh, that is something that you need to understand. The calculation part is always easy. So, uh, yeah, do that right because uh, we don't have the time to uh, go into the intricacies of everything so i'm just uh, in in totality i'm covering things uh okay let's move to a new topic here something that i love to teach correlation regression uh how many of you have uh, studied correlation uh, regression earlier how many of you have uh, done this before Just put a yes or a no in the chat box. No, says Rachna. Okay. All right. It's only Rachna who has not done it. The rest of all of you have done it. Okay, so it will be easy for me to teach. Uh, okay, I and Rachna need to learn. The others can teach us. 
uh, what uh, correlation and regression is. Uh, <laughs> Akhil, okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, all right. No. Uh, okay, Shruti. Fine. Shruti, what are you doing? And what, Akhil, what, is, what are you doing? I'm, I'm a deputy manager in one of the MNCs in Gurgaon. Okay. <clears throat> and why an MBA? Uh, because, ma'am, uh, <laughs> it, it's clearly uh, you know, useful in management field. So, and, you know, uh -huh. uh, provide the knowledge and, uh, you know, the small the small things which which enable us to take decisions at uh, you know at the mid level or the senior level of the management so uh -huh. uh, and especially these kinds of stuff which you are studying right now and we have studied in uh, uh -huh. other uh, subjects also so uh -huh. uh, that's why i'm doing it yeah okay and are you enjoying yourself uh, yeah absolutely okay great that that's what matters Okay, front office executive as well as a PA to executive director in a renowned school in Raipur. Shruti, great. I hope uh, all of you are learning something out of these classes because we are we are giving our times on a Sunday. Uh, <laughs> because because it's a holiday for all of us and we are we are doing it. So I hope. Uh, okay, Krishna Public School, great. Shruti, lovely to hear that. Uh, right, so co correlation and regression, as a lot of you have already studied this, uh, very, very quickly. Correlation is basically when we are talking about correlation, generally what people say is that if uh, like variables related to each other and is there a mathematical tool that can establish the relationship. Now, when uh, you talk about correlation, people generally uh, uh, they think that you are finding out the relationship between two things. Uh, basically, you are not uh, correlation does not tell you the relationships. It shows the association. Okay, so shows the association between two things, and um, most importantly, it tells you the direction of that association, which is very very important. Now, like Akhil is working with an MNC, Shruti is working for a school now. If, if uh, Akhil, Akhil, what area is your MNC into? Like, what uh, products do, do you people uh, uh, do? My domain, my domain is supply chain management, and uh, I work with global vendors. <clears throat> okay, great. So, uh, supply chain management. Oh, what a wonderful thing that he's doing. Giving me th uh, thank you. Uh, you know, it's easier to uh, teach when you know the areas from where the participants uh, come in. So supply yes, chain management he's talking about. Yeah, that's that, it, it becomes so easy for us. Uh, supply chain management, if he's talking about, so uh, is there a relationship, like is there an association uh, between traffic, traffic jams, or say toll barriers, and the speed of delivery. I don't know whether he's doing this. Huh? Supply chain, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Akhil might be doing much, much, much higher things. Uh, this is a very basic supply chain that I understand. Uh, CPM Pert has taught me so much. So, uh, is, is there an association between traffic jams or toll barriers and speed of delivery? Uh, does uh, how do you choose the route? How do you choose the route of your delivery vans? The delivery vans that you have, how, how do you choose the uh, route for them? Is it what the highways tell you? Is it what the stateways tell you? Is it something for which you apply your, uh, you have got special programs. Akhil, do you people use programming for this? Do you do what? Do you people do this, first of all? Is this a part of your thing? Yeah. Uh, actually, ma'am, this is part of the uh, product and I deal with the services. 
uh, okay. the IT services and you know other insurance procurement services. Uh -huh. So, but I can relate to this like uh, association between the traffic jam and the speed of delivery and how mm -hmm. do we choose the route. Uh -huh. So basically, yes, uh, th that. Uh, these are the factors which really impact the deliveries on time, the traffic mm. jam, toll barriers, etc. Mm. Mm. So, <clears throat> so how do you choose? So most of the companies, uh, big companies like Amazon and Flipkart mm. and these uh, e-commerce mm. companies, mm. definitely uh, you know use some kind of a programming where they can calculate the route and mm. you know the speed and barriers. So you know. Uh, the less the barriers are there on the route, the delivery uh, will be fast. Plus, so you 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 save on your fuel because exactly. this, uh, right. uh, uh, because at that level, uh, even if you are saving say hundred liters of fuel a day, that's a big game altogether. Yes, ma'am. And nowadays, uh, we you know broadly speak about the uh, um, climate change. So uh, environment, ecosystem, everything. So uh, most of the companies have the criteria to, uh, you know, mm -hmm. follow these rules. Mm -hmm. So yes, absolutely. Uh, right. These right. all are the so, factors. Uh, these are all the factors. All right. So uh, thank you. Thank you. So uh, when you're talking, so you, you are looking at an association that, okay, what is uh, like, if I have got 10 toll bo uh, barriers and, uh, how, is there a uh, uh, like uh, a relationship between these two things or not? And if if it comes out to be positive, then of course that means that more the to toll barriers, uh, faster the delivery. If it is negative, it means that uh, uh, more the to uh, the higher the toll uh, toll barriers, uh, slower is your uh, delivery. Okay, so uh, we know, of course, we know that this one is right, <laughs> this one is wrong. But uh, this uh, this uh, say sign that you're getting for, for your R, uh, because correlationship is shown with a small R, and it always varies between plus minus one. If you are uh, calculating your correlation, your it cannot be more than plus minus one. It has to be zero, plus one, minus one. This is where it is. It cannot go beyond plus minus one. Please remember that. That means numerically you are making some uh, error in your calculation. Like when you're calculating it, you are making some error there, uh, there, right? So uh, yeah, um, this is about correlation. Now the question that second comes in. I'm I'm just uh, trying to give you uh, a very broad idea about correlation and regression and of course i'll go to the uh, things I'll, I'll go to the scatter plots and all those things just let me uh okay so correlation is about association and So now, if I uh, going with the same example, I say that And I can add so many other uh, factors to it. So I'm saying that time taken to deliver is a function of traffic, toll booth, condition of roads, time of travel, that is whether you're traveling during day or night. You can add many things uh, to this. Okay, uh, skill of the driver. 
length of the vehicle. You can go on art. So when you're you're doing this cause and effect, so the causal relationship, when you're trying to find out the causal relationship, that is what regression is. And this is one of the main, uh, like you can say that it is the basis of decision making because your entire forecasting, your forecasting depends on regression. Like it's a very good tool of forecasting. And all of you who are there in the organizations at different levels of management, you need to forecast a lot. Whether you want to forecast the time taken, you want to forecast the demand, you want to forecast the uh, the cost, you want to forecast the income. There are so many things at, at various levels of management that you need to forecast. And uh, the, that forecasting can be done so well by using regression. So regression is a, is a very, very effective tool. And uh, uh, in, in, in modern times and current times, we are using so many variations of regression, right? Now coming to scatter plots, like how do you calculate your correlation? So correlation, there are generally when we are talking of correlation, we talk about uh, two, uh, two uh, estimates. Uh, one is the Carl Pearson uh, moment correlation and the other is your uh, Spearman rank correlation. These are the two uh, correlations that we are uh, mainly the methods of finding out correlation. One is, of course, uh, this is the most easiest way to do it, and that is your scatter plots. Uh, scatter plots are nothing but you just uh, plot your data on an Excel graph, and uh, this shows like if you uh, this is this is a scatter plot between promotion and sales. So if you're promoting your product and uh, how are the sales? So if you look at it, they're all clustered together. There's there's a cluster here. Like if you if you look at this. Uh, There is a cluster over here. So that means that there is a very strong association between the two, between promotions and sales, that if you promote more than your sales are more. And it is saying that if it is more than 80, uh, if your promotions are more than 80, uh, your sales are somewhere in the 100, 120 range uh, where they are, like rather 80 to 120, the ranges. So uh, this is this is the most easiest way of doing it. Uh, okay, these are some examples that uh, smoking cigarette increases uh, systolic blood pressure. Uh, you can do that. And of course, you've got the outliers. We have already spoken about this. And uh, okay. Okay, so positive, negative, no correlation. We have already talked about this. I, I don't think so that I need to tell you. Uh, you can just have a look that uh, it's a plus is a perfectly positive. That means if, if both your uh, uh, variables are moving in the same direction, if they are moving in the same direction, it'll be a positive. If both of them are moving in the opposite direction, then it'll be negative. If one is moving in the positive direction and one is in the uh, negative, uh, then also you'll have, uh, sorry, no, this is wrong. This is wrong. This is... Uh, is one is moving if if they are going in opposite directions then you'll have a negative correlation and if both of them are going in the same then you'll have a positive correlation of course if if your value is anything above 0 0.50 then whether plus minus 50 okay we are talking about plus minus uh, 0 0.50 if you're having anything above 0 0.50 that means it's it's a strong association anything below 0 0.50 is a not so strong uh, association or not so strong correlation exists uh the signs are telling you the direction i suppose that's uh, that's clear uh okay let me do this and tell you what it is uh we'll be talking about two things we'll be talking about the carl pearson method the carl pearson uh correlation and we are talking about uh rank correlation so these are the two things that you uh these are the two methods that you have. This is uh, for Carl Pearson. For Carl Pearson, you can use covariance uh, method. Uh, let me just very quickly keep it and see that what do I need to tell you to do? Uh, hmm. <laughs> oh. 
Okay, let me straight away go to this example. And or should I tell you the smaller one? This is the uh, this is your Carl Pearson's coefficient of correlation. Now, what is the difference between Carl Pearson and uh, rank correlation? Uh, Carl Pearson's moment correlation, you are finding out uh, when your uh, data that you are having, the data that you have collected or the data that is already existing is uh, discrete or continuous in nature. It is discrete or continuous in nature. And uh, like you have got numbers, you have got values, absolute values with you. On the other hand, if you have got qualitative data, uh, which you cannot quantify absolutely, but you can rank them. Okay, you can rank them. Okay, uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, you uh, 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 just recall, I, I spoke to you people about uh, shoppers stop. And uh, they do not ask you to give numbers to them they rather ask you qualitatively to rank them the uh, did the salesman help you they have all those questions they have got five seven questions uh, with you uh, uh, who recommended this and stuff like that and then there are a lot of smileys there the emojis are there and you need to press them when you are uh, uh, billing like while the, uh, your billing is happening uh, they they just ask uh, they Put forward that screen to you and you are asked to give your responses there the, the feedback that you are putting, giving now that there you are ranking it there you are ranking it now if i want to find out the correlation between ranks when i have qualitative data and i have i have ranked them then uh, i'll use the spearman rank correlation if i have got absolute data i have got it in discrete or continuous series then I'll be using the Carl Pearson coefficient of correlation. Is the difference clear? Is the difference clear? Okay. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll take that as a yes. Now here is an example. Here you have given the 20 months of uh, data is available with you. It is about the machine hours that they have taken, the production runs and overhead. You have got these three variables are there. You've got three variables, one, one, two, three. So you've got three variables. I want to find out the correlation between machine hours and production runs. Of course I can do, I can go for uh, multiple correlation as well. I can go for multiple correlation. So if I go for multiple correlation, then I can find out or between all the three three variables. But uh, to make uh, to keep the things uh, sing, uh, simple, uh, we are doing a bivariate correlation. We are just trying to find out bivariate correlation, and bivariate correlation means uh, you are finding it out between two variables. So here we are taking machine hours, and we are taking production run. And we are trying to find out the association between the two, right? Uh, now you have you. What you do is you sum up these. You The first step is that you sum machine hours and production run. So you'll have sum of MH, you'll have sum of PR. Uh, somebody can, if somebody can tell me the total of machine hours, one of you do it for machine hours and some, but somebody do it for production runs. I'm doing it for production runs. So somebody tell me about the 
machinas. This is coming out to be 760. This is coming out to be 760. Somebody uh, tell me about the machine hours. Ma'am, two nine triple one. Two nine triple one. Two nine triple one. Thank you. So this comes out to be two nine triple one, and this comes out to be seven one six. Uh, our n is equal to 20 because 20 months data is given. So we'll find out the mean of machine hours, which comes out to be 2911 by 20, which comes out to be 2911 by 20, 14, 14555.55. Similarly, we'll find out the mean for production runs, which comes out to be 760. By 20, 20, so that's 35.8. So we'll round this off to 1455 5, and we'll round this off to 35, 36. Uh, 36, right? And then we have the, uh, then we have this formula here. Uh, which we can use uh, straight away. One is uh, uh, one one method of doing it is that you find out x minus x bar. That is x is machine hours. This and then you find out the d square of machine hours. And then of course you find out y minus y bar. That is uh, y we are taking as production runs and then you find out the y minus y bar, the whole square, and then you go. Or the easy way of doing it is that you multiply the second method I'm telling you, the easy one, the direct method, is you multiply machine hours and production run. This will be called your summation x y right you already have summation x you have summation y you already have them right you also have to find out this is step one this is step two then step three comes in that That is x squared, y squared, x is your machine hours, and y is your production run. So you find out the squares of both, and then you find out the sum. That is summation x squared, summation y squared, right? And then you use this formula. Uh, let me just write it for you. I think so this will be, let me write it here. Let me write it in a fresh page. You then use the formula R is equal to summation x, y minus summation x, summation y upon the whole under root n, summation x minus summation x, the whole square, n, summation y minus summation y, the whole square. Is the formula clear? 
for the mean method you can uh, if you are calculating the mean then you can use a covariance method as well is this formula clear yes sir okay right uh i i am i'm taking that as an yes from everybody right i'm taking that as an yes from everybody that uh, all of you have understood uh, this uh, thing right uh, and you can calculate whatever it comes out to be and then you have to interpret the interpretation the interpretation of r this uh, is uh, of course the one is the value of r and second is the sign of r you have to do this one more thing because you people are managers or uh, training to be managers you have to tell that if if you want to show them that uh is like is it being uh, are they, are they explaining or not so you then calculate something called r square uh which is known as a coefficient of determination this tells you about the uh this tells you about the goodness of fit of the model goodness of fit of the model means that when you are talking about associations of course in your organizations you won't be doing um, uh, bivariate uh, uh, correlation you will be doing multiple correlation that means you'll have a lot of uh, variables at one go and then you'll try to find out the correlation between them and um, you need not know the formulas of course you have got uh, softwares uh, i don't know how many of you are uh, like are using it but uh, uh, ms excel all of us are using ms excel uh, ms excel has got uh, a correlation as a as a function you have got ms excel and uh, you might be having some specialized uh, softwares from your organizations uh, like for academicians, uh, we the academicians we are using softwares like SPSS. We are using we are using eViews. Uh, we are using Stats. Uh, we are using Stata. Stata. Uh, we are using Stata. So uh, yeah, generally we are using uh, uh, we are using R a lot. Uh, R. Uh, these 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 uh, are the softwares that we people use. Uh, we of course use MS Excel as well. Uh, MS Excel has got a lot of uh, it, uh, a lot of goods and a lot of bads to it so it depends uh, how you're using it so these are the uh, generally the uh, softwares that we use as academicians that is what we are using right uh, and the goodness of fit can be found out from r square now we come to uh, of course uh, like how what what, what uh, factors affect it uh, here, when when you are talking about uh, correlation, we are talking about uh, uh, linear relationship. So, uh, if if the relationship is linear, then only we go for correlation. If there is a non -re non linear relationship, then we generally are like uh, uh, then there are other methods of doing it, right? And of course, then you can test uh, test your R as well. You have got uh, 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 like uh, t tests are there. Uh, where you can uh, where, where you can do that and uh, you uh, this this is the formula that you use and uh, you can uh, you can use that uh, to that we can we can use these methods of course you people uh, i'm not i'm not going much into testing because uh, this is something that we teach uh, we keep it for the academics uh, portion a lot of this we use that uh, we come to regression which is very important uh, causality as i have said already to, told you uh, uh, for regression for linear regression there are a few assumptions that have to be kept in mind which are very very important and uh, 
let me first remove these annotations for you to understand. Otherwise, uh, it will be a bit difficult to understand. Let me just draw you back. Let me just. Ma'am, can we get this PDF? Uh, I mean, uh, this presentation. Of course, you can. Uh, you can take my presentation. There's no issues. Because it contains so much, so many formulas, very useful. <laughs> yes, you can. You can use all of them. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll speak to uh, Dr. Smriti and uh, I'll see how she can send it to you people. Right. Thank you. Right. Mera pura intellectual property hai wase ye. This is my intellectual property, right? Yes. <laughs> of course, I'll be sharing it. No issues, no issues. But then okay. you are allowing to use your um, IP na, so Haan. I think there, 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 there would be no issues. Right. <laughs> of course, of you course. can you can use your watermark. Uh, I can use my watermark, <laughs> which, uh, which you people are so good at removing it, Vasu. It's a uh, you know uh, it's a child. we don't have any problem. Uh, it, it's it's a child's uh, game for kids nowadays to remove the uh, watermark. Huh? Ka khel hai wo. Yeah, uh, we see we see that so often. बहुत बार ऐसा होता है कि हमारी PPT हमारे सामने कोई और present कर रहा होता है. So. <laughs> Okay, let's let's come back to uh, print the PDF. Uh, come on. Jitta mujhe aata, utta mujhe aata hai. Jitta apko aega. If if my students can do, use it more than I can do it, nothing like it. Okay, now linear regression. When we are talking about linear regression, there are certain assumptions uh, that you have to follow. Uh, uh, don't know whether I have kept the assumptions here or not. Uh, I might have. Uh, I'm talking about residuals and everything, and I'm not talking about. Okay. If I'm talking about uh, the assumptions, one is normality of normal, normal So uh, you have to check whether the data is normal or not. So there are various tests to find out, uh, check, check the normality of the normal normality or the normalcy of the data. There are various uh, tests to that and uh, uh, you can use them and uh, find out and the uh, or you can just uh, if you don't know how to use the test if your mean is equal to median is equal to mode then uh, this is uh, this shows uh, normalcy of the data you can compare your min and max and from there you can find out the standard deviation will tell you whether the data is normal or not normal data means uh, something uh, I with my terrific uh, drawing skills. This is a normal, normally distributed curve. So this is a normal distribution. And uh, so normalcy is very important. Second thing that, uh, that we are assuming here is, the, uh, is a linear relationship. So linear relationship, uh, I suppose people who are from uh, mathematical background, you people understand it much better than I understand, is that uh, uh, a linear relationship means uh, what? The rate of change is the same. Like in a layman's uh, language, if I'm uh, saying that if, if you have got two variables and the rate of change uh, is they are same, and if you're plotting them, and if, if they are coming on the straight line, so that means it, it shows that there is a linear relationship between the two. 
so uh, in, in in a very layman's language if I, if i want to show that so uh, that is there so uh, that, that's the second important assumption of uh, linear regression is uh, that uh, there has to be uh, normalcy and uh, of course the linear relationship ex should exist now uh, you have got two variables one is uh, the predictor variable and the predicted variable uh, now why is the predicted variable or the dependent variable. You can call it a dependent variable, you can call it a predicted variable, whatever whatever is easy for you to understand. On the other hand, you have got uh, X, which is which are your independent variables or which are your predictors. You can have more than one predictor. You can have one more than one predictor. In linear regression, one more thing is that if I if I may add that uh, the dependent variable is quantitative, is quantitative and, and continuous. It is uh, quantitative and continuous. Uh, so you, you write your, uh, uh, your, uh, equation as this is how you write it and uh, you can uh, also in many books you'll find it written as this In many books, you'll find it written as so. All of them are correct, uh, whichever is easy for you to understand. So it's y is equal to a plus b x plus e. Y is equal to alpha plus beta x plus e. Alpha is equal, y is equal to beta zero plus beta one x plus e. Then you have this y hat. Now, y hat is uh, y hat or y dash, uh, uh, any way you want to show it. These are the predictions that you have made. So, uh, when you 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 uh, estimate this, uh, like from y is equal to a plus b x plus e, uh, basically this is y hat that you are predicting. This is uh, this is y hat that is coming out to you. You already have your y. You, you estimate your A and B, you already have your X, you put it in this uh, formula and you get your Y hat. And how do you estimate your Y? E, e is the difference between Y and Y hat. So uh, actual value and observed value. So this is error term, Y hat minus Y. Uh, A is the intercept, B is the slope of the regression line. So if I'm drawing my, um, I'm drawing this and this is my line of regression so this portion this portion is my this this portion is a and this the slope that is there this is my b okay this is my b I have my y over here i have my x over here so this is my uh, independent variable this is my dependent variable or uh, you can have it the other way as, uh, as well like uh, and you can have it this way. Uh, convention uh, changes, convention uh, varies, uh, but this is how it looks like. Now your aim, what is your aim? Your aim is to this term. This term has to be small. Like the smaller this error term is, the better the uh, go, like the goodness of fit uh, goes up the better is the fit of your uh, uh, regression so this has to be as small as possible 
now how do you estimate your a and b right so this is this this is just an example that i've uh, taken that uh, uh, cigarettes and chd mortality uh, we have taken and uh, uh, we want to predict level of chd mortality in a country averaging 10 cigarettes per day so uh, this is this is a data that uh, i have taken from a book uh, the data said that they had provided and uh, the 21 countries uh, cigarettes per day chd uh, the chronic heart chd stands for chronic heart disease right so chronic heart disease we have, we have here and we want to find out so uh, this is the line of regression this uh, red line is the line of regression these dots or the squares that you are seeing these are your actual data and uh, you are trying to uh, regress and see that how uh, goodness of fit comes in. So uh, this is uh, like uh, one way of calculating it, right? This is one way, this is the second way, this is the third way. That depends how you want to uh, estimate it. You also have the least square method, the OLS or ordinary least square method we, where we use the um simultaneous equations and we we do that right so here already it is uh, there and uh, like the numbers are already there for you to see and you can just put it in the formula and like your covariance is given your s square is given so covariance is 11.12 your s square is uh, 5.44 7 so you calculate your beta value from here so this will give you beta so this will come out to be how much uh, beta comes out to be 2.042 it comes out to be 2.042 uh, and then you have the formula for a which is y mean minus bx uh, a mean you have and uh, so this is the mean of uh, this is the mean of y this is the mean of x uh, this is your beta value, like this is y bar, this is b, this is x bar, and you calculate. So you you write your y is equal to 2.32 plus 2.042x plus b. So this is your regression line. And then you uh, calculate the value of p. E. Uh, like y hat, you'll calculate and then do it. Uh, I, I know it's it's a lot of things. I'm uh, I'm stopping it here. We'll do a full numerical in the next class. And we'll do probability. So whenever we have the next class, most probably Tuesday or uh, Wednesday, whenever we are having the next class, we will be doing uh, uh, one numerical of regression. I'll tell you and I'll tell you the interpretation, which is more important. The uh, calculation is not important. It's the interpretation which is important. So I'll tell you, teach you that uh, in the next class. And I'll also uh, talk about prob probability there. That's the last topic that is left. So, uh, and a bit of time series, I'll tell you. I'll just tell you the basics of time series. So, we'll meet next time. Please do read probability and come. Please do read because probability is a bit tricky. Just uh, have a look at it and come for your uh, class the next time. Right? So, thank you. Uh, we'll we'll uh, close the session here today. Uh, it's, it's already, uh, like, it's more than 80 minutes. That uh, rather... It's uh, 100 minutes, almost 100 minutes that we have been speaking and the participants are also less. A lot of uh, you have left uh, the session. So, uh, Dr. Gargav. Let me just, uh, yeah, bless you, Krishna.
Hello? Yes, Tanima? Yes, uh, we, are, uh, we are closing the session for today. We have okay. understood correlation regression. Uh, uh, so in the next class, I've already told them that we'll be doing one numerical of uh, regression the in, with the interpretation and we'll be doing prob probability. And I've asked them to read probability and come for the next session, whether it's Tuesday okay. or Wednesday, whenever it is. Okay, I'll try to make it on Tuesday. Okay, fine. So um, and we'll I'll let you know all uh, all the learners. Right. Uh, although it is Sunday, but participants are very low. And they no, are in more, uh, weekend mood. Uh, they were they were more they were more than thirty students, but then they started leaving. No, uh, it because... happens only on Sunday. You know, I uh -huh. noticed it. Of course, they of course. all are in weekend mood, uh, and course, they will uh, watch they will watch the video later, and <laughs> that is too much. Ah, right. It's it's the it's lunch time as it is. It's over uh, the so, lunch time. Uh, thank yep. you, uh, Dr. Tanima, thank for the you. wonderful sessions. I was there. I I was uh, looking at the screen so many times in between, <laughs> and it was going on very well. Right. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, valuable time for us. Yeah. And uh, we'll meet hopefully on Tuesday. And otherwise, I'll let you know. Sure, sure, sure. Thank you. I'm I'm leaving the session. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay. Bye, -bye. Thank bye bye. Thank you, learners. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, thank I'll you, let you know for the next next session. Um, actually, I was uh, asking about I was not able to attend the previous class. So how could I know the I'll, I'll upload uh, those recordings. I'll upload those recordings on the YouTube channel. Thank you. Have you uh, attended earlier before Tanima Datta Madam's class? Sorry, ma'am. Have you attended earlier uh, other classes? Yeah, I have attended the first class, but I missed the second class because I 